the Indian Himalayas, the most spectacular mountain range in the world. In the east, this remote, lofty realm is believed to be the home of the gods, a place where myth and reality meet. For some, the idea that Jesus died in India is not such a leap of faith. For there is another legend that concerns the so-called lost years of Jesus, the years from age 12 to 30 that go undocumented in the Bible. According to legend, the young Jesus joined trade caravans that for thousands of years have connected Central Asia with the Indian subcontinent. He traveled across India until he reached Tibet, where he studied with Buddhist monks. Jeff will follow the trade routes said to have been taken by Jesus deep into Ladakh. He will journey through the Zanskar Valley and explore Buddhist monasteries near the capital, Leh, where it is said Tibetan scrolls describe Jesus' journey east. He will end his journey in the Nubra Valley, one of the most remote regions in the world. This is an incredible country. I mean, I feel like I'm riding on a truck through the bottom of the Grand Canyon, populated by Tibetans. It's absolutely, it's just, it's incredible. It's, it's dry, it's barren, just little parcels of emerald life bursting forth as you travel along. Incredible place. I had no idea it would be this wonderful, actually. About 20 years ago, my first trip to Tibet, I was in the Patala, the Dalai Lama's palace in Lhasa. I remember a lot of the Lamas expressed that Jesus had a presence in Buddhism. And it turns out there's a large uh, basis of legendary evidence that talks about Jesus in the Himalayas. Well, I've done lots of uh, investigations in my life as an anthropologist. But when you think about the implications, if we were to discover any real evidence that Jesus was indeed in this part of the world, it would change the way we look at, uh, certainly, uh, religious history across the planet. As far back as the 4th century BC, Alexander the Great and his armies reached India. Relics discovered from Persia to North India show there was movement between Palestine and the Himalayas long before the 1st century. So it is possible that Jesus could have made this trip in his lifetime. And if he did, he would have encountered Buddhist ideas. Ladakh has been a Tibetan Buddhist country for over a thousand years. Although there's evidence that Buddhism was here a lot before then. As a matter of fact, although Buddhism began about 500 BC, sometime around the first century, there were the beginnings of traveling Buddhist monks coming through here. And I'm about to pass a statue that was actually dated to 70 AD, which means had Jesus passed through here, he probably would have met a bunch of Buddhist folks traveling much as he was. If I could find similarities between Buddhism and Christianity, it would suggest that perhaps Jesus was here and that he learned from Buddhism. I'm just entering Zanskar. Moving into this place, it's, I feel like the ancient Tibetan legend of Shambhala, which came to us later as Shangri-La, a mythical, magical, hidden land of enlightened people. And this may not be that place, but certainly in this moment, crossing the glaciers, spending days and days traveling, it feels like I'm arriving at some place most remarkable. Jesus that we talk about is known to people here as Jesus. But there was a character in Hindu and, and Buddhist lore from centuries ago that's known as Isa. And we've come to understand that Isa and Jesus are the same person. I've been doing amazing research since I started this project, and some of the stuff doesn't really hold up to much. But every once in a while, you find something which is incredible. Um, I've just come across the Bahavidasya Mahapurana, 
which was written in the second century. And in that very respected and well-known work, King of Kashmir meets in the first century, just you know, a few years A.D., uh, a fair-complected, fair-haired teacher dressed in robes who comes from the West, who describes himself as being born of a virgin, describes himself as being persecuted um, by his own people as the Son of God, and his name, according to this traveler, is Isa Messiah, which is Jesus in India. So it's a pretty amazing piece of evidence. Up here, high in the mountains, things haven't changed in a thousand years. The whole of this region is dotted with Buddhist gompas, or, or monasteries. I was going to attend a prayer service called a puja at Karsha Gompa. I was taken to the puja by my guide, Skarma. He's been coming here since he was a child. How old is this gompa? The monk says this is the 2,000 years old. 2,000 years yes. old? Yes. And the puja here this morning, what, what is this puja about? We pray for all human beings, for all of the peace, for the world, for the everything, for peace, you know. For all sentient beings. Yeah. Prayers going out yeah. across the universe. Yes. Wow, I guess from this vantage point up here in the mountains, okay. it works pretty well. I noticed that the puja has some similarities to a Catholic mass. Ceremonial robes, incense, chanting, and the monks practice abstinence and celibacy. The Buddha even had the same teachings. Turn the other cheek was part of Buddhism 500 years before Jesus walked the earth. Oh, that puja was magical, you know? And like, it's really magical. I mean, it's like spiritual sense around. It's a mind-altering, spirit-altering experience. It's great. It's great. I've been talking to Sonam Wangchuk, who is a very well-respected scholar as well as a monk here in Zanskar. And he hasn't really heard much about the legend of Jesus in Zanskar, but he has pointed out some wonderful similarities between Jesus Christ's teaching and the teaching of the Buddha. Compassion, kindness, warm-heartedness, non-violence, mercy, all those things the two have in common, remarkably in common. If we ever did find proof that Jesus was here, it would change the way we think about religion, and it could be quite challenging. A lot of folks are not going to like what I have to say based upon what I've experienced because there are fundamentalists who insist on fragmenting and separating people by religion. I feel the importance of this story is it does the opposite, that we no longer have the luxury of separating ourselves according to beliefs, and that this story is a way to look at bringing faiths together by looking at the things we share, that we overlap, that we have in common as human beings. Well, you know what? A journey like this is like the same as looking for Shangri-La. It's really a mythic journey. It's about coming and having a sense of wonder, a sense of adventure, asking questions, going back inspired. And I don't imagine that 2,000 years ago was much different. I can easily imagine a young kid in Palestine, 12, 13 years old, joining a caravan route, seeking a great adventure, full of wonder, coming back 18 years later transformed. I may never know for sure um, if Jesus came here, but I'll never forget the fact that I didn't.